Next is RFM analysis. So, what is RFM? RFM is a method used for an analyzing customer value. It's a three dimension to see the customer value. R means frequency, F means frequency, M means monetary. If we use an example to see, let's see the one year data and set today to calculate recency. So the recency should be equal to the number of days that have passed since customer last purchase. For example, if a customer last purchase is yesterday and another customer last purchase is last year, so the customer who purchased uh, who last purchase is yesterday should be more valuable than the customer who last purchase is last year. And second is frequency. It is number of purchases in the last 12 months. So in the last 12 months, if a customer purchase 100 times, it should be more valuable than the customer who purchased only one time. And third is monetary. It is total amount of money spent in last 12 months. So, for example, in last 12 months, suppose a customer had purchased $1,000. It must be more valuable than the customer who purchased only $1. So, this is the three dimension to evaluate a customer value. And we can also separate the recency, frequency, and monetary into five bins. So now let's first see the top, the, R, the RFM cell, which is 555. It means that in recency, frequency, and monetary, it is the top customer. And if we see the bottom, the RFM cell, which is 111, it means that in recency, frequency, and monetary, in three dimension, these customers are the worst customer. And we can use the IFM category and weight together to calculate the IFM overall score. Now, we will use some data to practice. That's first to understand the data set. You will get the payment.csv file and sales item.csv file. First is payment.csv file. It is a restaurant's POS data, and I will explain one by one. The first column is shop ID. It has A003 or A004. It represents a shop. And next is receipt number. And when you go to the restaurant to buy something, you will get a receipt, and it has receipt number. And the third, line, third column is transaction date record. It means which date the transaction happened. And the fourth column is item sequence. You can see that it's, it has one or two. For example, uh, the the third record and fourth record is one or two. It means that in this transaction, the customer bought two things. The first is one and the second is two. And next is the payment method. You can see here, OC means octopus card. And VH means another method to pay the bill. And next is pay amount. It is the amount of that product and next is club member or not Y means yes and N means no and last column is octopus card ID and next data set is sales item and some of the columns are the same as the payment.csv and some are different and I will uh, explain the difference and first you can see here there is transaction time record it has the time of the transaction it is a restaurant you can see the first record is 9 a.m. it means that the customer eat breakfast and some of them are lunch or afternoon tea and dinner 
and next is category ID. It means that the product products category, and next is product ID. And we can see here the net total is total amount total amount of that transaction. It adds the products price together, and next is taken out or not. Yes means Y means yes, M means no. And this is the two data sets. And here, let's see the question. The question is that suppose you are the data analyst in that company and they want to analyze the breakfast and lunch business. So you're going to find the top 10 customers with highest RFM score which means the top 10 customers with highest customer value during breakfast and lunch hour. But please pay attention that in the real world, the data is not that perfect because they use, they sometimes do, do the, in this company will do the internal test and they use product ID to do internal test. It's not real customer transaction and you will delete in the, uh, in the process. This is the final stream. So first, you are going to merge the data together. Let's go to SPSS Modeler to do the step. First, let's delete the things we have done. Or we can simply create another stream. Click File, click New Stream. And now it has stream 2. Here on the right, the stream 2. So let's first import these two data set. Click sources and drag and drop the WAR file. Click WAR file. And here we find sales item. Double click it. Click apply and OK. And you can also click the preview to see the 10 first 10 records. And next, we will import the payment. Click here and click payment or CSV. Click apply. OK. These two files have been imported. So next, we are going to merge them together because now it is like, it is like two isolated islands. We will use the merge to merge them together. So we click record ops and then we find merge jack and drop the merge here we connect sales item to merge payment to merge and then here we double click merge and we find the merge method has order keys and condition we click keys to merge and we put all the keys into keys to merge. We click here, the arrow. And then here you can see there has four methods to merge. It has inner join, full auto join, partial auto join, and anti join. And now I will explain one by one. So now click apply and OK. And then open merge. Click the PowerPoint and you can see here the merge method. I will explain one by one. First is inner join. You can see here the one data set is sales item. The next data set is payment. Some of them can merge together. Some of them cannot merge together. So if we use inner join, it finds the part who can merge together. So it's part two. From here, we can see it includes only matching records. It's inner join. And second is full auto join. It, it, it includes matching and no matching records. So it means that matching records is part two, and no match, non matching records is part one and part three. So full auto join is part one plus two plus three. And next is partial auto join. It includes matching and selected no matching records. You can click here and then select the part. By default, it's the first part, the sales item. 
So if we select the first op option, it is the matching and selected part 1 matching. So it's part 1 plus part 2. And if we select the second part, and it becomes part 2 plus part 3. And the fourth is anti-join. It includes records in the first data set, not matching others. So the first data set not matching others is part 1. But here has a question. If we want to use part 3, how can we choose it? SPSS gives you an option. You can see here the main data set is sales item. So we have part 1. If you want to choose part 3, we can click here and the previous part two, the previous second data set becomes the main data set. So here the payment comes to here and sales item comes to here. So we can select part three by anti join and we change it back. So now change it back and then merge. We use the first inner join in this situation and then click apply and OK. Now we can use a table to see the output. Double click the table, click run. You can see here these two data sets is matched together, is merged together. But you can find here there's too many columns. Some of the columns we are going to, we will not use it. So we are going to fill it out. And next is filter. So we will filter some of the records. So click record ops. I'm sorry, click fill ops and find filter. It's the three node, the third nodes. And connect the merge to filter. Double click on filter. And here you can see a lot of fields. And some of them we will not use it. It's S member, pay amount, the master code. Taken out as IRS price, and let me see quantity and sales code here. And we will also see here the BRCDE. It's very difficult to understand. Actually, it's the shop ID, so we can change the name here, select here, and then choose all of them and click backspace and then delete it. So we will change to shop ID. And next is check number. Actually, it's receipt number. R E C E I P T number. So next is octopus card. And next is the date of transaction. And next is transaction sequence. And next is the time of the transaction. And here is the product ID. And then here you need price and that total. We understand it. We don't need to change the name. And click OK. You can also click preview to preview the output. You can see here the BRCDE have being changed to name to shop ID and now click OK. So we have finished the filter. So the next part is fill field reorder and sort. Because some of the fields are on the so we want to change the order of the fields. So click field ops. And then from the last node, we find the field reorder and connect the filter to field reorder. Double click the field reorder. And then here, we want to put the shop ID, the date, the receipt number, and octopus in the first four fields. And you can see here the other fields, we want to put it to the 
button so we click this button and it comes to the bottom so click OK apply OK so we can preview it here we can see that the shop the date receipt number octopus have been put the is the first four column click OK OK and then we need to sort the data to sort the data we click we record ops and then find the sort and then connect the field reorder to the sort double click sort and click here and find the shop ID click shop ID and then click let me see the PowerPoint date receipt number so it's date and receipt number and click apply and OK and now we it will be sought by the shop ID the date and receipt number the next task is select because I've told you that the company use test to do some internal test so we need to delete this transaction and we click record ops and font select connect the sort to select double click on select and then click discard we need to delete the record and then click the computer the calculator icon and then we find product ID click the equal to test pay attention that it's uppercase the test is uppercase click check and OK and click apply OK and then now we want to use the output to see if it is right click table click run and you can see here the shop ID and the product ID here the test have been removed so this is select 